welcome to the main sanctuary here at St. Cuthbert's Church this Maundy Thursday. Behind me, Christ has gathered his disciples at his table. He prepares to share with them the bread and the wine, his body, his blood at the Last Supper. Even within this meal of his closest friends, he knows this night one of them will betray him. He also knows what awaits him. But by gathering his friends around him, it is as if he wants to leave a special memory, a special part of himself that they will always be able to return to in memory of him. From this meal, he would then head out to the Garden of Gethsemane. His disciples would fall by the wayside. He would be left horribly alone. He would ask his father, if possible, to take this all away from me. But ultimately, he would say, not my will, but thine be done. Events would move quickly, he would be arrested, betrayed by a kiss from one of those who had only a few hours ago joined him at the family table. He would then be handed over to the chief priests. He would be handed over to Pilate, to Herod and back to Pilate. Only for his closest disciple, Peter, to disown him three times. That night, the lights would go out for Christ. In a moment, we too as a family will head through to the memorial chapel, just as the Last Supper is a memorial meal of him. Our memorial chapel is a gathering place where we remember those who have gone before us. It's now the oldest part of this church. And it seems fitting that just as Christ met in an upper room, a small place, not a temple, not a grand church, we too in a moment will meet in the intimacy of our small room the Memorial Chapel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we remember with gratitude the presence of the church in remote and highly populated areas all over the world. May our actions and our worship testify to the truth of the resurrection, broaden our vision of what is possible in these trying times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for the world we inhabit. Bless our Queen. Bless all the world leaders who must take important decisions, particularly at this time, with regard to the coronavirus pandemic. Give them the vision and will to consider the best of all suggested and available solutions to this. Father, bless those who suffer from coercion by arrogant and selfish despots and comfort those who have no voice. We pray for mercy and justice compassion and integrity and for the protection against evil and the strengthening of goodness throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, give protection to the young and unborn. 
Let them live in a world of love and acceptance. Bless the providers of care for all children at risk. Support and comfort all who are confined to their homes, those in small, cramped or uncomfortable premises, and especially for all in refugee camps without hope. Guide us to a deeper commitment to support one another as we grow in faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for those who cannot pray, for the pain and anguish which engulfs them, for all those whose lives are troubled and insecure, for those who have little energy left to rejoice. Bring healing and the resources to cope with suffering and give us the grace to carry one another's burdens with love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for lives well lived and commend to your keeping those who have died. Give comfort to the many people separated from their loved ones by coronavirus, either by geography or hospitalisation. Comfort them in their grief and pain at being unable to visit or to attend their funerals. Let the dying be assured by your eternal presence and through the hope of resurrection may they know the joy of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the precious gift of new life. May we never again take it for granted, but live each moment in the fullness of life that Jesus gained for us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
eternal God, whose covenant with us is never broken, we confess that we fail to fulfill your will. Though you have bound yourself to us, we will not bind ourselves utterly to you. In Jesus Christ, you serve us freely, but we refuse your love and withhold ourselves from others. We do not love you fully. We do not love one another as you command. Forgive and cleanse us, we pray. Lead us once again to your table and unite us with Christ, who is the bread of life and the vine from which we grow in grace. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. I declare to you in the name of Christ, you are forgiven. God of mercy, forgiver of all sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The reading this Monday, Thursday, comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, reading from verse 3. During supper, Jesus, well aware that the Father had entrusted everything to him, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from the table, laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, tied it around him. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel. When it was Simon Peter's turn, Peter said to him, You, Lord, washing my feet? Jesus replied, You do not understand now what I am doing, but one day you will. Peter said, I will never let you wash my feet. If I do not wash you, Jesus replied, you are not in fellowship with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not my feet only, wash my hands and my head as well. Thanks be to God for this reading from his holy word, and to his name be all the glory and all the praise. You may recall that just a few moments ago, in the call to worship, I said, on this day, Christ took a towel and washed his disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. You will know that the church has been closed for worship during this period of lockdown, but we have been able to reach out to others following the example of Christ. We've managed to sustain our outreach to the homeless by gathering them not to sit down at a table, but by calling them to receive a meal, to grab it, and indeed to go. As you know, gathering people for a prolonged period close to each other is not possible, but it is still possible with careful social distancing still to feed those who are hungry and the most needy in our community. And so working with Steps to Hope, our partner charity here at St Cuthbert's, two chefs have been in the kitchen each Sunday night, two helpers have been pushing out the trolley, and two others have been serving packed hot meals to the homeless as they gather in our courtyard. You may remember that during this Holy Week, on the Monday, Christ went to the courtyard of the temple. He saw tables behind which sat the money lenders and those selling pigeons at exorbitant prices. And he turned those tables over in disgust and anguish that they had turned somewhere sacred into a den of thieves. 
I like to hope that were Christ to come each Sunday into our courtyard, he wouldn't turn the tables with the pack meals over. Rather, he would stand behind them and serve those who needed him most. Amen, and to God's name be all the glory and all the praise. that he was given to death, he gave his body to his friends. In living and life-giving bread, the Lord of all descends to us. He gives to us in twofold kind his sacred body and his blood. Our twofold self receives from him the body and the Spirit's food. At supper we sit at table with our crucified and risen Lord. We know that it was not only our forebears, but we who are redeemed and brought forth from bondage to freedom, from mourning to feasting. We know that as Jesus was with his disciples in the upper room, so he is here with us now in the memorial chapel, in your homes. And he says, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never be thirsty. I will never turn away anyone who comes to me. Hear the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do it in remembrance of me. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so in the same way, the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, as the Lord Jesus Christ on the night of his arrest took the bread I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart unto this holy use and mystery. And, he's, and as he gave thanks and blessed, let us draw near to God and present to him our thanksgiving and our prayers. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts and lift them, them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It's truly right and our greatest joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. O Lord our God, creator and ruler of the universe, you bring forth bread from the earth and wine from the fruit of the vine. You made us in your own image and freed us from the bonds of slavery. You claimed us as your people and made covenant with us to be our God. You fed us manna in the wilderness. You brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey. When we forgot you and our faith was weak, you spoke through prophets, calling us to turn again to your ways. Out of your great love for the world, you sent your only Son, by whose cross and precious blood you redeemed us and set us free to serve and to love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and archangels, 
and with all the faithful of every time and every place who sing forever the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, whom you sent to deliver us from the bondage of death and slavery to sin. In humility, he descends from the heights of glory to kneel in obedience to love's commands. Boundless, he takes on the bondage of our sin. Free, he takes our place in the prison of death. In the deserts of our wanderings, he sustains us, giving us his body as manna for our weakness. The cup of suffering which he drank becomes for us the cup of salvation. His dying ransoms us from death's dominion. His rising again opens the way to eternal life. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread, this wine, from the gifts which you have given us, and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim Christ crucified and risen that we may love one another as your Son commanded. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup which we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with the living Christ and with all who are baptized in his name. And as this bread is the body of Christ, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Lead us, O God, by the power of your Spirit to live as love commands, bound to Christ. Set us free for joyful obedience and glad service. As Jesus gave his life for ours, help us to live our lives for others with humility and persistence and courage. And especially we think of all those working in the National Health Service, doctors, nurses, and ciliary staff. We think of their courage. We think of them out there saving lives. Give us all strength to serve you faithfully until the promised day of resurrection when with the redeemed of all ages we will feast with you at your table in glory. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours, almighty God, for ever and ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. According to the holy institution, command, and example of our Lord Jesus Christ, and as a memorial of him we do this, who on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had blessed and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is a new covenant sealed by my blood whenever you drink of it do it in remembrance of me the bread that we break is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? The cup which we bless, is it not a sharing of the blood of Christ? Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy upon us. Jesus, bearer of our sin, have mercy upon us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, Grant us peace. Holy things for holy people. Taste and see how good God is. The body of Christ broken for you. tasted and having seen how good God is, may the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. we thank you that your son Jesus Christ gave us in this wonderful sacrament the memorial of his passion and left us this holy meal of bread and wine in which we share his body and blood grant that we who have celebrated this sign of his great love may so revere these sacred mysteries that we may know within ourselves and show in our lives the fruits of his redemption through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you as the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. As we prepare to go out into our own gardens of Gethsemane, may the Lord journey May you feel the comfort of his presence in your own hours of difficulty and challenge. May you know that he goes out before us. May you know that his love for us knows no limit and no end. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this Monday, Thursday night, and forevermore.
forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One, you are the praise of Israel. In your ancestors, they put their trust. They trusted you and you delivered them. They cried to you and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm, not a human being. I am scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me feel secure on my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not be far from me. For trouble is near, and there is no one to help. But you, Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people. In the assembly I will praise you. Ye who fear the Lord, praise him. All your descendants of Jacob, honour him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or scorned you, the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from you, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise. In the great assembly before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. <laughs> 